Greetings, I'm John from Two Brothers RC, and you guys asked for this for how long? So I got your big horn, right here. No. Bighorn is a bush plane that's capable of insane 3D acrobatics. It's also really lightweight too, and it can be flown in tight spaces. If you can be arsed to toss on some better wheels, and, and I didn't, it'll handle rough surfaces no problem. If you don't mind it sounding like a dumpster rolling down five flights of stairs, it'll handle everything you throw at it. But you might risk a prop strike from all the bouncing that it's gonna do. In short, Bighorn is super cool. <laughs> Let's kick off this review with the 3D section, because while it may not be a purpose-built 3D airframe, I decided to treat it like it was anyhow. I put at least 15 packs through it doing all the 3D stuff that I can think of, and even things that I wouldn't normally try. Buddy RC markets it as having a very light wing load, and I think that it's definitely really forgiving in that department. The best way I can describe flying this airframe is that it's like flying a Timber X that isn't trying to kill itself constantly. It's not featherweight, but it's not super stall prone either. By the way, all the flying that you're seeing here, this is all on a 3 cell pack, believe it or not. People are like, you need to fly it on 4 cells. I'm like, this is on 3 brother, it's fine. The brand new batteries from SMC, these are super cheap and pair really well with the Bighorn. Consider picking up a few packs from smcracing.com to support Danny and the insanely good batteries he's producing. The packs sit really well, right where you see them, giving the Bighorn a great center of gravity that's super easy to fly. This is some of the most fun that I've had in a long time with a model aircraft because it combines two of the things that I really love, 3D flying and high wing bush planes. When I enjoy flying something, I really go out of my way to beat the hell out of it because I can trust the plane, but unfortunately that does sometimes lead to serious mistakes. Jesus Christ. I thought I was gonna wreck that plane. Need to calm your nerves down a little bit, buddy? <laughs> thing right off like it never happened. <laughs> like I said, it's super forgiving. The wing load is a big part of that. So let's have Flying John take over from VoiceOver John and see just how it'll go. Power off stall testing coming in now. Full elevator. Oh my god, look at how nice that is. Super gentle. Just don't get it into a bank. Now what happens if we put it into a bank turn and then pull the elevator? Jeez. <laughs> There's your stall testing under accelerated stall. Good God, I just about trashed this plane. Yeah, you did. Let's do accelerated stall testing. Power on stall. Full elevator. It just stays up there. I'm not rolling it, it's literally just flipping on its own. Good plane. My heart kind of skipped a beat there, so let's make it do some other stuff while we're up here. Crankshafts. You heard me talk about the wheels and suspension, or lack thereof, earlier, and it's true. This woody is really stiff and quite hard. It'll bounce on you constantly. You gotta have good technique to be able to land it on pavement without bouncing. Like, really good technique or just land it in three-point attitude, or better yet, use crow, which is ailerons pointed up as the flaps drop, to bring it in super slow to minimize the bouncing. Plus, it has the benefit of looking awesome, too, which is well worth it. Want to know how to set it up? Skip to the end of the vid. I'm getting back into setup guides again for the channel. Another thing to consider with this hard woody is that it's got a real tendency to nose over in grass, so don't even bother with wheel landings on rough strips. Always three-point it as slow as you can get it. Otherwise, you risk a nose over. Now, this isn't really a huge issue. It's related mostly to technique. And the fact is, an airplane can't be everything to everyone. So this doesn't really bother me, and I'm not going to detract from its review because of it. Sometimes the reality of a particular airframe is that it has to be landed a specific way. And this is one of those types of planes. Spectacular. Set up crow and forward slip it from any height that you want to try, and it'll just float down like a rock until you set it down gently in all three. 
You can basically do this without any consequences as long as you remember to level out and flare it. You can basically abuse it. It's kind of stupid how effective the air braking is with Crow. Stupid. <laughs> it's absolutely stupid. There really isn't much to take offs either. Bighorn is super easy to take off, like most bush stall aircraft. Either in a three point or a wheel takeoff, there's not much to it. You can use full span flaps to really get up out of thick grass, and you can take off from basically any surface with it, even rough garbage like the wood chips that we landed in earlier. Like any tail dragger, if you want to do a wheel takeoff, smooth throttle application and letting the tail fly with some right rudder before you try rotating will help greatly. Or if you're like me, maybe you just want to hand launch it, and that's okay too, because 3 cell power is more than enough for this bird to do anything. Speaking of anything, let's get back to 3D flying and showcase the rest of the neat stuff that I could pull off with Bighorn. I did find the typical wing rock from performing upright harriers, until I started pulsing the throttle, which caused it to stabilize and stop rocking. Once you get past 50 to 60 degrees vertical, it's more than happy to slowly move in any direction that you tell it to go. And if you like hovering, it's a little trickier than you might be used to, but it's not difficult to control the torque roll with full span ailerons. Or if you're like me, you're already used to it and you can just use rudder and elevator to compensate for it. There's a setup guide in the back of the vid covering that if you're curious. It's also really good at inverted harrier too and does it without any wing rocking whatsoever. Like most airplanes, it does inverted harrier better than upright. That's typical and to be expected. I guess the questions everyone's gonna have. Do you prefer it to a timber? No. Interesting. Because it's more squirrely than a timber is. Mm, yeah, the timber's pretty pretty stable. It does insanely flat spins and is basically the king of pop tops in my hangar. I think there's great pop tops. <laughs> Imagine how much fun that would be to be in that thing. Right Pinwheels and crankshafts are easy. Crankshafts. Oh man. That wasn't even a crankshaft. Was... Rolling harriers require a little finesse, but are eminently doable if you put in the practice on the stick work. I don't know what this maneuver is called, but we'll call it bunny hopping here, and it bunny hops really well, almost like it's straight out of Half-Life 2. The only real drawback is the massive rudder coupling. You'll notice that I didn't talk about knife edge flight, so here's Flying John and our aerodynamicist Kieran to explain why. See what I mean? You gotta really really fight it. Oh, he's trying to roll out of the mm -hmm. knife edge while you provide rudder input. Yeah, that coupling is awful. Yeah, but once you correct for it, don't do that. So with all this in mind, the review score for the OMP Bighorn is a 9. This Woody's hard and stiff gear are a definite issue and they have to be accounted for. But this issue isn't so bad that it's unflyable, it just takes some practice and getting used to. Kind of like what you have to do with almost any airplane that you're going to fly, be it full scale or model scale. The knife edge coupling is also a problem and that is intrinsic to the design of the plane, so that's where the one point knockoff comes from. Otherwise, it's phenomenal. I don't think I've ever seen a plane just like kill the momentum so quickly in like a snap or a tumble maneuver. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It would be a 10 out of 10 if OMP could engineer out that awful coupling issue with the rudder. And you know, maybe consider putting some air filled tires on this bird instead of lightweight concrete wheels. If you like what you see, consider picking up your own bighorn from the link in the description. It's a huge help to us and it helps us fund things like this bighorn since we had to pay for this one out of pocket. But you guys asked for it and we gotta deliver. Stay tuned for the setup guide covering all the info that we think you need for this bird. Here's the setup guide. I'm so sorry about taking some time off from doing this, but the channel has started turning into an all-consuming full-time job, 
that pays the equivalent of just over $3 an hour. But giving up on our community isn't an option and you guys deserve to see how to set these airplanes up to their full potential, so I'll just find creative ways to get this content out without taking up all of my personal time. As always, I fly on 150% rates when possible. The servo setup screen shows you where I've had to make some adjustments. Not every surface could be 150% without binding. That's okay, sometimes it's like that. The flap system values are listed here. Because I run over 100% rates, I need 3 seconds of travel instead of 2, otherwise the flaps move super fast when they get past 100%. Starting off, the most important mix is full span ailerons. Here's the uh, roll rate without it. So ailerons only real quick. Ailerons only. Now, compare that to the roll rate with it. Full span ailerons is a simple mix of the aileron channel to left flap channel. 100% to 100%. In my case, it's controlled by switch D2. Use a switch that you prefer or leave it on all the time. Full span flaps uses the flap system channel to control the left aileron channel. This is controlled by switch C. Position 1 enables full span flaps set to 0 and 50%. Crow is position 2 on switch C with 0 and 125% negative rate, which causes the ailerons to reflex upward. Snap flaps are mixed with the elevator channel mixed to the right flap channel at a rate of 100 and 100% controlled by switch F position 1. This causes the plane to backflip or front flip super easily and can be flicked off or on with your index finger if you're a thumb pilot like me. Harrier flaps are the inverse of snap flaps and are set to switch position 2 on switch F. When you run crow or full span flaps, you need more elevator compensation to adjust for the wing changes. The values that I use here will keep the plane from ballooning into the sky or pitching down violently. For the Harrier flap system to work correctly, you'll need to make the ailerons point up too. This helps stabilize the plane in a Harrier a bit better, but it's up to you whether you want to use it or not. This is a simple mix of elevator to left aileron, negative 100 and negative 100% on switch position F2. The last mix you'll want is making ailerons move more when crow is enabled, otherwise you'll find it difficult to roll the bighorn when crow is deployed. This overdrives the aileron channel, making it much more responsive and easier to use. It's a curved mix, so copy the points that I'm using and you'll be all set. If you don't set up this crow mix, you'll barely be able to roll Bighorn when crow is deployed. This is a vital mix if you're using crow, since it'll make the plane controllable even when it's air braking. That basically covers it. If there's something here that I didn't get to, join us on Discord via the link in the description and ask about it in the Tech and Setup channel. The community is happy to help and I'm usually there to chat too. Thanks for watching and let us know what you think in the comments.